All right, guys. Happy Thursday. Um, so I'm going to be speaking all about pricing in today's session, uh, in today's training. And by the way, if you want the uh, positive pricing guide, that is an attachment for this training, uh, just comment below pricing and uh, myself or one of the team will send you the link for that so you can download it. Um, but we're talking about pricing and pricing is a big part to play when it comes to being in business, okay? Um, we found that when it comes to pricing, people, number one, have no idea uh, how to price. Uh, number two, uh, people uh, struggle with their profits because they're not pricing effectively. And number three, uh, because of that, they struggle with keeping the clients on. They end up getting burnt out and it's not a win-win kind of scenario. And business is win-win. So I'm going to be talking about pricing today. And again, uh, if you do want the positive pricing guide, just comment below pricing and I'll send you the link for that uh, so you can download it, which is going to help. So what I found through you know the years of being in business and common mistakes that I see a lot of business owners make uh, when it comes to pricing uh, can be quite quite catastrophic when it comes to business, uh, but it doesn't need to be complex either, okay? So the things I'm going to share with you are quite easy to get under control, uh, quite easy to implement, and simple, and I like simple. So the first one, the first mistake that people make when it comes to pricing is they price based on self-esteem. Um, some human beings are going to feel confident, and some human beings are going to feel unconfident. And unfortunately... Or fortunately, your feelings are nothing to do with pricing. They, they shouldn't be involved in pricing at all. Um, it's nothing to do with you, per se. Uh, it shouldn't be. It should be all about the customer. So whether you're feeling good about yourself or not, that's irrelevant. And I say that with tough love. Uh, what should matter is actually your client or customer seeing the value that you offer. So never ever price based on self-esteem. Sometimes you'll see it out there with uh, the, the, these gurus out there who will sell. And it comes across as get rich quick. They will be so energetic and so you know upbeat. Their self-esteem is sky high, but actually they don't deliver. And they give a lot of people in the industry a bad name. So it actually goes both ways. Those people who are, aren't confident uh, undercharge because they're unconfident uh, and those people who are full of self-esteem uh, overcharge but actually uh, it's not as good when people are actually using their product or service okay so that's the mistake number one never ever price based on self-esteem alone number two is and this is a big one people price based on their own financial lack let me explain you might be earning 30, 40, 50 grand. And you might be charging, I don't know, or want to charge a customer three grand for your product or service, as an example. Because you might feel that you are struggling financially, when it comes to price your product or service, you're going to tell yourself, well, I wouldn't pay for that. So why would my customers? And that mindset, that limiting belief of financial lack is a thing that stops you from getting out there marketing your product or service to the world. That you could help people with. So the big mistake there is your own financial lack. And again, guys, I know it's tough love, but it's irrelevant. It shouldn't be about you. And, um, you know, uh, I think there's a great quote is, arrogant um, and ignorant to the extreme to assume what your customer can and can't afford is arrogant and ignorant to the extreme to assume what your customer can and can't afford. So remove your self-esteem and your own financial lack away from the pricing, okay? That's mistake number two. The third big mistake that people make is a price based on the deliverable. Let me explain what this, it, this is. So back in the day, so I hear, I'm 31, um, so they used to have cassettes, right? These things called cassettes. And uh, old people used to have these cassettes and they used to buy them from these TV adverts, okay? And these cassettes would have recordings on them uh, to help with hypnotherapy, stopping people from smoking, marketing, that kind of thing, okay? And there's actually a guy called Dan Kennedy 
who sold these cassettes. Uh, I think it was in the 90s. I'm not sure. I was born in 1990s, but it was a long time ago because we don't do cassettes now, right? Um, so if, you, if you're an older generation, you'll get what I mean here. And the cassettes uh, were sold at like $3,000 for a cassette, right? Now, most people would look at the cassette and go, I'm not paying £3,000 or $3,000 for the cassette. But that's where the mistake happens. It's not the cassette you're actually paying for or you're charging for in this case. You're actually charging for the outcome the cassette uh, creates for you. So people will look at the deliverable, which is a cassette in this case, and they'll go, oh, it's the cassette. I'm not going to charge this for this cassette. But actually forgetting about the fundamental thing that happens when people purchase a cassette, which is the outcome they solve. So in this example, Dan Kennedy uh, is a marketer. He teaches you know, loads of marketing strategies. He was a copywriter as well. And uh, the outcome for that was actually to help business owners improve their marketing, sales, etc. And that's why he was able to actually generate hundreds of thousands by selling a cassette. Uh, he didn't focus on the cassette itself. He focused on the outcome the cassette had to offer. So hopefully that's making sense. The big mistake there is don't focus on the thing you're selling. So it could be that you have a Zoom session with someone and that Zoom session is uh, 15 minutes as an example. And you might think that, oh, I'm not going to charge a grand for that because it's only on Zoom. Well, actually, what outcome can you provide in that 15 minutes? And is that valuable for that person? So big mistake, number four, do, uh, sorry, number three, do not price based on the deliverable. The next key pricing mistake is competitors. Uh, this is a big one. We hear this all the time. Um, people will look to go into business and they'll go, oh, competitor A is pricing this. Competitor B is pricing this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to price around there. And unfortunately, if you price based on your competitors, that is a race to the bottom. Because if you just undercut them by a little bit, all they need to do is undercut you. And then what you're going to do is undercut them. And all of a sudden, you're going to be out of business. Okay. And if you really think about this, where more than likely did your competitors get their pricing from? If you're looking at competition, where do you think they got it from? They got it from the competition too. And that's a mistake. So always, always, always price based on the value you have to offer, never your competition. And you can stand out by the value you offer, such as a unique selling proposition, which is a benefit that comp uh, that, uh, that uh, conveys to the, the customer. The benefit's got to be about the customer, okay? So fourth big mistake there, do not price based on competition because that is a race to the bottom. Instead, price based on your value, what you have to offer, because that is a price, uh, sorry, a race to the top. The fifth, fifth big mistake when it comes to pricing is assuming, assuming that your customers won't pay higher. Big mistake. And this is mindset. Um, again, go back to that quote I said. It is ignorant and arrogant in the extreme to assume what your customer will or won't pay. When it comes to getting a degree people will take out a loan of 50 grand, right? And you might be selling a product for three grand. So it's not just about the price. It's about what people see the value in. People will spend a holiday of five grand. People will get the latest iPhone. People will buy, I don't know, a, um, a luxury retreat away, a new car. So it's not just about... Uh, my customers won't pay this, it's if they see the value. And people get in their heads assuming my customers will never pay this, which is BS. When I started Shift Success, the amount of people who told me that police officers wouldn't sign up uh, was ridiculous. And now we're in the hundreds. And I didn't listen to them because I didn't assume. I didn't listen. And I actually got out there and started speaking to people. And here we are four years later on with, with hundreds of people inside a community. There's another great quote, uh, sorry, a story, a guy called Steve Leach. 
Steve Leach was one of the uh, first action coaches there were. An action coach, uh, you might want to Google it, but I won't go into too much. But the first action coach, he was like the founder. He was the main guy. And when he was starting out, he went to his customer's house and um, he went into the house and it was full of like, it was quite a, like a dingy house. It wasn't nice. It wasn't, you know, it had cats everywhere. And it was kind of, you know, if you're in the job right now in the police, you've probably been in some of these houses, right? And, you know, he does his talk. He does his, you know, his, his talks about his business, talks about their pain points, etc. And he leaves with a, an appointment next week. And he goes back to the um, the customer's house, ready to hopefully uh, sign them up. He actually thinks he won't because of the condition of the house, etc. And he walks in the house and goes, oh, you know, where's, where's your furniture and where's your fridge and where's, where's this and where's that? Everything was just bare bones. And uh, they said, oh, we sold everything to pay for your products or service, right? And Steve was like, whoa, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm going to give you a refund. I don't like this, blah, blah, blah. And the customer who sold all of their possessions, really, to use Steve's product said to him, who are you to judge us on whatever it takes to get a result? And that stopped Steve in his tracks. And uh, that particular customer ended up being one of Steve's best clients. And they did phenomenally well. Steve didn't assume, based on the condition of the house, etc. He actually got out there and actually spoke to people. So never, ever assume. People pay what they see value in. People get a bigger mortgage. People get the latest phone, the latest car, trainers, clothes, a nice watch right? There's loads of the holidays. So when it comes to your product service, it's not just that they won't pay. It's just that they may not see the value yet. And there's a few things you can do with that to help them see the value. And one of the last key mistakes is pricing based on time. All right. We never, ever want to price based on time alone. Let me explain. If you're in business and there's one of you, typically there is, if you're like the deliverable of that of that service, um, then there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only one of you. You are either going to get burned out. You're going to hit a ceiling on the amount of income you can earn because there's only one of you. And uh, number three, because of that burnout, uh, you're not going to be fully present for your clients. Okay. So instead of pricing based on time, you want to price based on outcomes. There's a story I like to share. I've shared this on my podcast before. Um, there is, I'm a landlord of, you know, 75 units and HMOs. And uh, I can relate to this. It's not a true story, but it's a story that is going to help. So there's a landlord and there's a leak, right? And the, the leaking's coming all through the ceiling. The landlord's in a stress. Uh, for those who don't know, actually, I actually flooded my first HMO. It's just a true story. And I was panicking. Um, but anyway, this story, the the... the the HMO is leaking. It's coming through the ceiling. The landlord's panicking. He's ringing around plumbers. Someone answers the phone. Finally, plumber comes around. Mr. Landlord, I'm going to be there in two minutes. Comes around. He looks at the leak and he just switches one switch and the leak stops. And the landlord is shocked and goes, oh my God, that's amazing. And he goes, that's no problem. Here's an invoice for £500. The landlord then says, 500 pounds, you was only here for two minutes and you did that. You flicked a switch. And he said, no, Mr. Landlord, I knew what switch to flick. He didn't focus on the time. He focused on the outcome the landlord really wanted, which was to stop the leak. So we never, ever want to think about time. Your customers do not want your time. Your customers want an outcome. They want their problem solved. So keep away from that pricing mistake. So guys, hopefully that's made sense. That's six pricing mistakes that I want people to keep away from. If you want the positive pricing guide that goes along with this training, just comment below. Pricing will send you that guide that's going to help you uh, 
in relation to pricing. Um, it's completely free, so you can just comment away and we'll send you that. Um, and if you're watching back on replay, type in replay uh, and drop a like if you have got value from this as well. And uh, and yeah, keep away from those six. Just a bit of a summary. Never price based on your self-esteem. Never price based on your financial lack. Never price based on the deliverable. Never price based on competitors. Never assume what your customers will or won't pay. And number six, never price based on time. Guys, hopefully this helped. If you want the free resource, uh, Positive Pricing Guide, comment pricing below. And I'll be seeing you very soon uh, for the next training uh, coming up. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon and stay safe.